Welcome back everyone. Um, I'm just going to go through the output two quickly, following on from last week's video uh, in relation to output one. Um, I had uh, condensed my research down to two models, I had the iTech FHD uh, 1080p uh, and I also had a Blackview uh, 4K UHD. Now what I've done is I have chosen the iTech model because it's a model I actually own and have at the moment. So it made sense for me to actually uh, use that to take measurements and so on. So what I've done now here is on this output two page, I've done the freehand graphical representation all by hand. Okay. And this is the sheet that I will use to inform my solid works. Okay. I have chosen um, this model. Number one, because I have it. Number two, then, because there is a variety of geometry and so on that I'll be able to explore in the SolidWorks um, uh, output. Um, and I'll be making a video on that. So I don't want to delay too long here. What I want to do is I want to explain the layout of my page, what information I have, how I'm describing it, and the type of sketching I've done and so on. Okay. So I've started off here. Um, I have a nice sketch in the middle all right, of the main dash cam. Okay. Um, and again, I use a method called perspective sketching, okay? I think it's a really nice method to use, especially when you're looking at products and you're trying to evaluate them or design them, which will come later in the project, um, because it gives a more realistic view. And when you apply renders and so on, you're able to kind of bring a little more uh, reality to it. You can see here these little LEDs, they almost look like they're standing out as real LEDs would, and with the shading and rendering. So what I do in that situation is I start off, I sketch a very light um, line to guide the front and I set up a couple of vanishing points either side of the page. And this is all freehand. And what I do is I use these vanishing points to create vanishing lines in both directions. And that it gives me the framework for developing out my bits and pieces. Now I also use those vanishing lines to create the uh, some of the opposing sketches that we can see here. For example, this is the front side, this is the back side here with the LED LCD screen, liquid, uh, liquid crystal display. And um, then you can see um, I also use the same vanishing lines there for the, um, the SD card and so on. So what I have here, I wanted to kind of get that sketch on the page and then get everything around it. If we just jump up here to the top left hand corner, you'll see here I actually have a sketch from inside a car from the back seat view looking in. And what I've done is I've just, you know, created a scene where the product is in use, okay? Because you always want to give context for the product and the environment with, within uh, which it is placed. So, for example, you can see here that the straightaway the dash cam is a screen-mounted dash cam because this would be the screen inside the car, and it's capturing the footage outside the window. Um, and there you go as well. You can see here I have the power supply plugged into a rear jack just so you can see it. Um, and a little bit of a cable running there as well. So they're the main kind of, I suppose, big components that we have. Then what I've done is I've linked it out, I've explained it, uh, view of iTech, FHD, 1080p dash cam mounted inside a car, suctioned to the uh, inside of the windscreen, power supply also visible. Then I went on here and I've done a slightly more detailed sketch. It's small, but it has the same view. And that's just to show a very brief glimpse of the product. It's some of its parts, um, you know, and especially the movement aspect. You can see here that with this kind of ball and socket pivot joint in here, you know, it can twist 360 degrees. This can tilt left, right, and so on. Uh, and I've noted that. And then move over and we'll have a look at the mounting system, okay? So with the mounting system, we actually have this top block here, which fits into the top of the dash cam itself via a slot joint it slots in clicks in okay and we have a fixed position um ball joint here okay these are actually one part okay and they are stuck together and how it moves actually is when you come down here this ball sits inside the treaded area here inside and what it does is you can actually rotate it around inside because inside behind that tread there is the socket. And the socket has pretty much the same radius as the ball. It's a radius of seven, radius of seven inside there. Um, and uh, just really realize I forgot a dimension there. That one there is actually five. And uh, that's in relation to the clip here, which we get in a second. So you can see the tread here. What role does the tread play? 
Well, this bolt that I've drawn out here, actually, okay, it spins onto this tread, and when you move the socket and ball, what you do is you loosen the tread uh, on the bolt till the bolt moves up, and it's a plastic hexagonal tightening bolt. So when you move that up, what it does is that it releases the pressure on the plastic, allowing you to move this more freely inside here. As you twist it back around, it tightens the plastic around the ball, all right, and it locks the pivot joint or the ball and socket joint inside in position. So once you have a set position that you're happy with, you spin that ball down, it tightens everything up, and that's the job done. Now, you can see here there's a tiny slot on the neck of this uh, mounting system here, okay, the mounting block. And um, what we have here is we have just a very small hole in there. You can't really see it on screen because of the darkness, but it has just a set, imagine a set of small plastic dowels sitting out that actually feed into these holes here. And what this does, this uh, has a little thumb grip on it on the other side, and it allows you to clip and lock this uh, suction into position, okay? So it'll move it slightly forward, slightly back, giving pressure onto the suction pressure plate here. This is on the middle of the, um, the, the suction block, all right, at the top end. And you can see here then I have the actual translucent rubber all right, that fits directly on top of that, okay? And that will be kind of uh, adhered using adhesive onto this part here. And as you create the suction and you use the clip, it fits in against the screen and it creates the suction, okay? So I've explained that as best I can. Um, that lens there, fisheye wide angle, okay? Uh, would be the term there, really, uh, for the this particular model. So have that lens noted there if you look back into the model. Um, and I have nice little kind of details around. I have, uh, again, it's a little dark to see here, but I actually have the SD card slot there um, where the SD card will go in, okay? So that, if you want it to say, it will travel around like that, and it fits right in there, okay? Now, so that taken into account, let's move ourselves around here. So what I have here uh, already uh, as I have the main part here, okay, I call that part one. I have part two here, okay, which is the um, ball joint, okay, with the the, the fitting, the, the top block here for fitting, um, slides in, clicks in. Part three, the hex bolt. Part four, the, um, the clip, okay, that adjusts the actual mounting and suction. Um, then I have part five, which is the actual essentially the mounting block part six here then which is the translucent rubber which is adhesed uh, or it's adhered onto that surface um then i have part seven the sd card i have part eight then which is this uh, led okay and what i've done here as well as i've shown an alternate view of the object of the main dash cam here to show the uh, screen on the back and also how the buttons protrude so slightly at the bottom we'll get to the buttons buttons in a moment i also have the sound bar and microphone bar there which is located in the bottom left hand corner of the object and you can see i have it there and i have the dimensions in for that as well and a little logo there to show that it's sound just to draw the examiner's uh, attention towards it that part eight then that's the led okay so we have six of those leds located around the actual uh, lens area of the dash cam and that's to enhance the brightness of the environment to ensure that the footage is at quality especially if there's low light um, and then what we have then um, below here we have our part 8 goes to part 9 this is the power supply so this is the bit that plugs into the the, the actual power ports that are in the car um, and uh, it's quite a sizable piece but um, it is what it is and I've shown the cable going out and the connection there and we can see in the orthographic where that actually fits in. In fact, if you look here, I have shown that power supply, this end of it, going in here. So what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to show the parts, I'm trying to show how they fit in, how they go together, how they might be used. Um, and again, I've described you know materials and so on. With the exception of the lens, the entire product is made of uh, from PET plastic material, 0 0.75 to 1.25 in thickness. Um, now, there will be certain little features where it won't be um, plastic, for example, um, you know, you'll have these brass strips here and um, they'll be used for, you know, the electrical parts and um, conductivity and so on to keep a stable uh, flow of power um, from charging purposes, okay, and connection purposes for durability um, of the actual parts themselves. Now, 
if we look to here then i want to focus in so that's like all our exploded views of the parts really everything's kind of apart that's a full view that's it in position um and then the orthographic okay now the orthographic is done freehand okay i didn't go measuring out but what i am using it for is the main measurement information elevation plan end view everything nicely rendered measurements as accurate as i could get them um and what i've done there is i've highlighted it as much as i possibly can without overdoing it um and again you can see some dimensions placed onto the main sketch of the dash cam there as well and i've also made sure that all sides are covered now there were one side of the product that had nothing on it which would be this side here and on this side we have the sd card slot which i kind of showed here as well and uh, the plan view you kind of just get a nice view of the top block there where that mechanism at the, the top would slide in um, and then the bottom surface has quite a bit of detail we have the buttons here um do a couple of measurements oh yeah that had those in um so i have a playback play or uh, rewind fast forward uh, menu okay mode and um, record power button located on the bottom of the little screws located there as well everything sketched nice and neat measurements are there um again sorry if to add in a couple of measurements i've shown the one mil that's how much those buttons protrude so when you're pressing those buttons all right they are evident enough for you to select with a finger However, you know, um, they are slight and close together. So I did notice with this product that you do need to be really accurate when you're pressing the buttons. But that's not something that we really need to worry about. It is highlighted, okay? And it is a design feature, okay? Maybe it might be considered a flaw, but it is what it is. Um, I've uh, noted the screen length, um, which is, or the diagonal length, which is 60 millimeters. And I have the kind of the screen um, dimensions for length and width um here uh note note is 52 and 32 um and i have all that information there and from that there i have the basis now for actually going ahead and um creating a you know a solidworks model from the parts that i have i have a couple of dimensions here all i just do is i write them in there's four mil i had noted these earlier that's six mil and six mil right there as well okay so again before i would go making it i would have this page and i would again have the model with me as i'm using solidworks and i would be able to um you know remeasure because i think it's very important you get into the habit of measuring twice and cutting once uh, that's a woodwork term but measure twice model once because we don't want to have any discrepancies when we come to actually putting pieces together we don't want them to be too small or too big or not fitting or not looking in the right proportion so it's really important another thing to note that the camera uh, lens part that, that that protrudes from the front it's on center with the main body of the dash cam okay so for example if the total width is 86 the midway point there is 43 midline and uh, the height of the object is 50 so the midline would be uh, 25 so if i want to locate the center there we go okay and that's really practical information from a modeling point of view i have tried here to show the object uh, in its environment in use all its parts and uh, the orthographic information um, nice rendered sketches okay in perspective telling the story telling the the real kind of i suppose if you want to call it the fine information about the product itself um, now there may be inaccuracies here and there with measurements half a mil a mil so on but again that's why i suggest you always measure again when you're modeling the actual product uh, on solidworks so this is the one i'll be modeling um, again i'll just state the parts this is part one part two part three part four part five part six part seven is here part eight part nine and that's it okay these buttons and that are going to be modeled onto the surface so there's they're not considered additional parts um now the minimum requirement for the higher level project is five parts okay so i'm doing nine parts which is not too many i don't think i think when you break it down it's probably a fair amount of parts um you know to do and um, if you can keep it to five fantastic Um, i'm going to do the nine because some of them are quite simple for example, this would be just draw the profile of that in SolidWorks and extrude one millimeter, okay? And that one millimeter will be the thickness right here, okay? So that being said, I'm all ready to go for uh, output uh, three and four. 
which I will have ready in two weeks time so Wednesday two weeks I will be putting up a tutorial on doing the SOLIDWORKS for each of the nine parts the assembly all right how they'll be in the folder and then also the actual drawing sheet to go with it because I'll be doing one drawing sheet and I'll show you the contents of my drawing sheet for example art graphics exploded views auxiliaries isometrics um, and so on a pill of materials um, even though photorealistic images are not required in the power data project it was not included on the uh, outline of the brief it is for power p at higher level but not for the part a but we'll do a couple anyway we'll put them in on the page maybe like a kind of a border uh, of photos small photos but it's always nice to get the photorealistic view of the work you've done and it only takes a few seconds so that's my output too okay it took me about three hours in total to put that together um again everyone will sketch a little bit differently i would expect there are people out there and students who will sketch a lot better than me and um, sketching is you know not something that i was naturally good at came with effort and practice um but i use that perspective method because i find it is more realistic gives a nice presentation i have the text all nice and neat all block capitals here now a little more uh organized than the output uh, 1.3 in the last and deliberately so because that output 1.3 was me just exploring now i'm really getting to the nitty-gritty of what is actually involved in the product so once you have that output 1.3 i would say don't delay get out get onto that uh, output 2 uh, make it happen one page all by hand make it nice measure it up get it done okay and i will put up the next video in two weeks time so in the meantime all the best good afternoon good evening and good night